Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly, and we hope you're all having an awesome, awesome day or night, wherever you're at. Absolutely, and we have an awesome, awesome guest. Yes, he we do. He is training the next generation of voiceover superstars. He is the go-to kids voiceover coach. He's Tony Gonzalez. Let's get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Guys, our guest is the go-to kids voiceover coach. He is the founder of Kids VO Productions. He is flat out awesome. We're so excited to have him here. You're going to learn so much. He is Tony Gonzalez. We are so getting buzzed. Oh yeah! Welcome. To oh the yeah! Show. I, you know, I'm I'm more in awe of you guys. <laughs> you guys are you guys. That's a brilliant intro of me. But like I like I said, I'm a super fan of you guys. So I'm it's in awe. awe of you. It's, so it's like I'm watching you guys. It feels like I'm at Disneyland. <laughs> I, just before we recorded this little intro, we were talking you just heard about it. He's like staring at us. I'm like, uh, Tony, you need to stare at the camera. <laughs> he's are... like, but I'm in awe of you guys. No, I watch, sweet, guys I watch you guys stuff. I watch you guys stuff, and you guys well, are you super thinking. amazing. And I I love what you guys cover and talk about so thank you I'm thank honored you. and I feel privileged to be here well good and you we know what so if you weren't worth it you wouldn't be here <laughs> well, <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. So, so well, and I was saying to Tony that um, you know your name comes up a lot absolutely and you have carved out this incredible niche of working with these kids and you're so admired and respected for what you're Aww, doing and your kids shucks. are out there dude they are working they are so articulate and talented and grounded i'm proud so congratulations it's it seems like you have a really Thank really you. I don't know what to like say that. to that. <laughs> but thank you. There, you don't need to say well, my advice. Uh, by the way, that, we do have really questions cool. for you. Yes. Okay. And <laughs> so you we're guys just going to stare at really, each other. Yeah. We'll just all stare we're at each other. We're just going to admire so, each other. Um, um, you guys are cool. You guys want to hang out sometimes? I'm going to, unless Stacey's got something else to say, I'm going to break on in and Well, I'm going to break in too. There's going to be breaking in all over the place. So check this out. What are some of what are some of the elements needed for a kid you know, a young child to break into voiceover these days? Like, um, I, I think there's a, there's a lot of um, things that, uh, that a kid needs to break into the industry. Obviously, they need very supportive parents. Okay. Um, that's a necessity. Uh, Same supportive parents. <laughs> um, but I, I definitely feel like uh, the, kid, the kids that I see, I look for certain things. And I, I'm at a point now where I can pick and choose who I want to work with. Of course. And yes. that's super amazing. But I think I always look for the kids that um, are driven and they're focused. Um, and they want it. They, right. they really want it. Because you can have a kid that has an amazing voice yeah. and is um, maybe super talented, but maybe they're not driven or focused. Right. And that overtakes everything or supersedes yeah. everything eventually. Absolutely, man. Yeah. So. I, I, I read where you had said um, that you, you don't treat your students like children. You treat them like professionals. Oh, pulling up some stuff. Yeah. Yes. Um, and what do you mean by that? I, I definitely think kids get it. I mean, kids get the idea of when you speak to them as an adult or a kid. I'm very blunt with the kids that... I work with, uh, I, I, I have a conversation in the first session usually when I'm working with them and say, um, I'm going to be very blunt and direct because that's the only way um, for you to get better. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and, and mm -hmm. say, okay, that was great. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, yeah, that's great for self-esteem and stuff, but I'm looking for my kids to work professionally. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want them to know what they're doing and be really good at it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. That's good. <laughs> Not you. Did, oh, what thanks. you said oh. was beautiful. Oh, oh. Uh, you're oh. pretty cute too, though. But I just wanted to <laughs> just a little follow up with that. Um, how do you? I mean, obviously, the le the amount of no's you get can level an adult. You know. Oh, I mean, sure. So obviously, every kid doesn't get told yes. How do you kind of walk that line with them and and help them handle the? I think I'm pretty realistic uh, about what um, what the percentages are or the averages are. Mm -hmm. I, I usually put it in a realistic fashion to the parents. Yeah. Because the kids yeah. are just having fun a lot of times. Right. But I think the parents need to know that a lot of times you have to just consider, I'm going to do 50 auditions mm -hmm. and maybe I'll get one callback. Right. That's the yeah. general kind of percentage that I see out there that you'll do. And maybe you'll get five callbacks 
and then you'll book something. Right. Because you have to establish yourself with the people that are listening to your auditions. Maybe they, maybe Disney or Nickelodeon hears one great audition for you and you get a call back. Well, what happens after they hear three or four great auditions right. and it's consistent? Mm -hmm. That's talent, that's skill. Right. Right, right. It's not just and a I think fluke. That's what a casting director mm -hmm. would be looking for. That's is, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That consistency. Right on, yeah. dude. Thanks, man. <laughs> I'm in awe, Tony. I'm I'm in awe of you guys. <laughs> Stop it already. Hey, is there a is there a uh, <laughs> A right age to begin to coach with you, and and what is your criteria? To... I, I I definitely um, well, <laughs> I recently started training one of my youngest. My youngest um, used to be hi Hudson Hudson hi Hudson West. Hudson, 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 Hudson. Hudson West was officially my uh, my youngest at five and three quarters, as he said five and three quarters. Oh, um, but more recently, I started uh, training uh, Gianna, uh, a little girl Gianna, who's four and a half. Wow. Um, which is more like teaching the skills and getting her kind of in the booth, but not is she's she not reading? really reading. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of. That's the line. It's like they definitely have to be reading mm -hmm. and comprehending. So at least like six or seven. I usually think six is a good age, mm -hmm. if depending on the energy. Like you can get some six-year-olds that are super hyper and high strong yeah. and aren't focused. Right. Um, that you, yeah, you sure you can record them, but uh, I don't know if yeah. you're going to be able to keep a, their attention for training. Right. Totally, right. man. I would think that that's. It, that's Tony the Taskmaster. So, <laughs> Tony the Tiger. No. Um, Thanks, man. Uh, that's, or you could just say Speedy Gonzalez. Speedy Gonzalez. So, what are the nicknames so, <laughs> Has there ever been a kid? Has there ever Were been you going to say a kid that that you you feel that that after isn't the first make class, it or is you do said it? no, no, I, yeah, this is not going to work. No, no, out. I, I've had those We're situations. We're not naming names, Chuck. No, no, no. I've definitely. And what's their name? No. <laughs> Her name, I'm mean, just kidding. No, I, I, I definitely have had those situations and I've been completely wrong. Mm -hmm. I swear to you, I've been wrong yeah. in, in that situation. So I stopped like even trying to guess it because I don't have a crystal ball. Yeah. I don't have a crystal ball yeah. and I can't, I can't figure it out. But I definitely think that's why I go back to if a kid is focused and driven and learns the, the, the techniques and things that I teach, they then, can do it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. You have kids that come from all over the country yes. to study with you. Yes. Congratulations. And Skype all over and the country. Skype. Yeah. Which Beautiful. Is great. How wonderful is technology? Technology and how much is has amazing. Changed I've everything. Actually, I think the furthest away I've ever coached somebody was Dubai. Nice. It was crazy. Um, this young lady, her father was uh, a doctor that trained other doctors. I can't remember her name, sorry. Um, but um, I was training her when she was in Dubai. Wow. I've had another client, Deepa Samuel, that I was training her uh, for a short stint when she was in India. Mm -hmm. So cool. It's that. crazy. Doesn't that yeah. feel Technology good, Technology makes it, like, I interesting. Know. He is such a great educator. He translates <laughs> across time zones, people. Exactly. Um, and, and, he other speaks, <laughs> and he speaks 99 different languages. Uh, so. Yes, backwards. Um, <laughs> what do you, so why do you think, why do you think you are an effective coach and director? I, I think it has to do with the three main components I always talk to my clients about. Um, I want them to be, um, I instill, I guess, confidence, mm -hmm. professionalism, and knowledge. I want those three things. I want them to be knowledgeable um, about who the top people in the industry yeah. are. Mm -hmm. So I guess they'll have to watch VO Buzz Weekly to see all the top They'll people. See several. <laughs> I'm dropping that in. <laughs> yeah. Thank hey. you. Um, um, here's a twenty. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you for that. Um, Checks in the mail. <laughs> uh, but I, I think ha having the knowledge base of okay, who who's the best in the industry? Who are some of the best people? Mm -hmm. uh, listen to the Great Elias. Listen to the Tara Strongs. Listen to the Maurice Lamarches. The um, oh gosh, I'm sure I'm missing a ton of people. Yeah. The Frank Welkers. Listen to all of them and kind of absorb what they're doing and listen to their interviews and see the stuff that they're doing. That yeah. increases your knowledge yes, base yes. so you kind of understand a little better and imitate. Imitate their reads mm -hmm. that they've been directed for in different shows. Imitate right. that. You know what? Yeah. That's so funny that yeah. you say that because I tell people to do that all yeah. the freaking time yeah. and, and now you're saying it. Yeah. Why is it so important to do that? Um, because you develop an ear. 
Um, a lot of, uh, I think a lot of kids, you know, they're, they're, they're quick uh, at picking stuff up mm -hmm. and they, they can develop an ear sometimes yeah. a little quicker than adults because they can hear it and just imitate it and copy it yep. because they're used to doing that as young kids because that, and I totally think that, that, yeah, that mm -hmm. imagination is still really primed up. And then when they get to a little, I guess, uh, the teenage years, like 13, 12, 13, mm -hmm. like you said, they're inhibited. They, they have these inhibitions that get built up because of other kids judging or looking right. at them and mm -hmm. saying, because yeah. I, I usually say, tell to my clients, it's like, okay, would you go over there with a toy and sit down and, and play with a toy in the schoolyard in high school? Mm -hmm. No, tell you wouldn't, because you'd be, you'd be judged. <laughs> you'd be judged. Yeah, you'd be judged. Yeah. And um, a lot of times for my older kids, I say you have to knock down those walls of inhibition mm -hmm. to break through and be like a big kid. Because you know as well as I do, a lot of the voiceover people that you, you, you've you met and worked with, they're like big kids sometimes. Sure. Totally. Yes. Um, yes. Some yeah. recording big, sessions hairy that I've- kids. <laughs> yeah, and they're not shy. <laughs> some, yeah, right. exactly right. Some recording yes. sessions that I've sat in when um, when I was working at Disney, I, I would sit on, on as many recording sessions as I, as I could, yeah. or sometimes I go over where my clients are working at Nickelodeon, I'll sit in on their sessions to mm -hmm. pick up on what they're doing, and you hear like everybody just joking around playing and it's constant. It's yeah. like new stuff is always coming up and they're, they're joking around. They're like, like they're big kids. Mm -hmm. That's so great. Yeah. And how do, you get, how do you get these kids, like if they are tensed up a little bit, right? How okay. do you get them to loosen up? Like what's, because uh, sometimes it's pretty hard to get. Oxygen, we pump it into the studio. <laughs> that helps, that helps. Uh, kind of like Vegas. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Rarified a little oxygen air. there. They don't even know that you're getting it. You hear a slow leak in the studio. Yeah. The rate for those sessions is a little so higher than the uh, <laughs> not awesome, than the CO two um, sessions. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I think um, a lot of times it's trust. Right. I think a lot of times the kids the kids know mm -hmm. they they know they they get a sense. I think they have strong. Uh, senses of you know if they're comfortable with somebody or not yeah. and I think right. that's just what it is is there's always a certain point within a session or in training that I make a fool out of myself <laughs> with the kids and they catch on to it and it loosens them they up a little safe. bit I think yeah. I yeah. think it, it makes them a little more comfortable that, okay mm -hmm. he's just a regular person I wish I was a kid now yeah. Come on, I could train on. with you, man. It's like Chuck. You don't have to be a kid. Just come I don't. In. This just in, Chuck. You're still a big kid. Uh, I'll maybe. be the only adult that you um, actually train. No. Chuck and I are the oldest infants yeah. in the world. Um, do you do you think it's more difficult to work with adults or kids? Um, you know, I, I started off as my my niche being um, niche niche. Uh, I, I started off with working with mainly kids, mm -hmm. and it evolved. It's evolved even to where adults were constantly asking, do you work with adults? I'm like, sure, of course. I mean, I can train adults in the same concepts. Right. Um, it just moves a lot faster. Yeah. Right. Um, but there are hiccups, like I said, because kids have a low, low inhibitions. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they just go for it sometimes. Totally. Where adults are a little more controlled and they hold back sometimes. Right. They right. don't know what natural real big is, mm -hmm. so sometimes they hold back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, adults have an advantage over kids because they have the, the, the knowledge or the history of, oh, I used to watch this show, it reminds me of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I used experience. to watch the Jetsons, you're saying do this kind of like that, Judy, totally. uh, Judy Jetson or this character. Yeah. yeah. So adults have different challenges too, but it's it's all fun. Yeah. I, I, I love working. I think my oldest client, um, Peter, hi Peter. Um, Peter's 89. Hi Peter, Peter, Peter. No, Peter's in his, I wanna say in his 70s. No way! Right on, I say Peter. Peter. That's so and he, he sounds like Michael Caine. He wow. sounds like Michael Caine. So amazing, beautiful voice. Um, I loved working with him. Mm -hmm. It was just like honey off the mic when you're just listening yeah, yeah, to him. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'd be in awe of him too. That's, That's so a good, great man. image, yeah. Hey, what advice would you give uh, adults when doing kid voices? Um, Besides adults don't doing, do it. No, <laughs> adults doing kid voices. I, I, I think it's interesting because I think the industry has evolved a lot in the last 15 years. Yeah. I feel like a lot of casting is doing more casting for real kids. Yeah. They mm -hmm. want to hear real kid voices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so adults doing kid voices, I mean, you got to learn from the best of the best, obviously. you got to pay attention to what 
uh, Gray Delisle's doing. You've got to pay attention to what Tara Strong's doing. You've got to pay attention to what some of the top VO people in the industry yep. are doing. Mm -hmm. So you have an idea of, okay, what works for what style of Which, show. And also the bar yeah. right. of how high it is. Of how yeah. high it is. Of how high yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, but I always feel like, you know, the industry has grown so massively. I'm sure you guys have seen it. Yeah. You, you guys have seen it for uh, video games. Uh, you guys have seen it for Netflix, Hulu, yeah. all Amazon. It's yeah. grown so Huge. exponentially that that there's so much more room for other people. So I don't say, you know, you shouldn't do it. I yeah. say, you know, go for it, but just learn from the best. Yeah, mm -hmm. and be, be knowledgeable. Yeah. Very good. I love that, man. You keep your walls down. Yeah. Keep your walls yeah. down. Dang and, it. And, and just to, like, to and top up what you were saying is, like, I remember, like, a few years back, voiceover agencies didn't have youth departments. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, uh, a lot of voiceover agencies still, still don't, don't have exactly. a youth department. Yeah, What's this going blows on? me away. I know, I know. man, but I'm now, not gonna mention any names. Missing the yeah. mark. Get your youth departments Get your youth out. departments yes. working. Um, but you know what, I, I think I think there's agencies that are just yeah. cream of the crop for, for, you know, for kids. And you know, that makes it easier if you're casting yeah. a project, right. because you know where to go. Yeah. If you're exactly. casting a project, you just go to the top Kids voiceover agency. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah. We all know who that is. We do. Yeah. Wink, as soon wink. as they lower the age limit for <laughs> when a kid can drive, <laughs> then everything's gonna really turn around. Um, hey, Tony, I have a question for you, dude. So, okay, in your opinion, what do you feel is a standout audition, kid or not kid? What is a standout audition? Um, I think a standout audition would have to be. Um, Unique sound, one. Uh, definitely somebody that knows. What do you mean by unique sound? Well, I think I think for for boys, a lot of times you'll you'll hear sometimes um, you'll hear something that's very unique in their voice. Um, if you think of um, like a uh, texture. Justin Felbinger, for example, if you if you Justin. listen to Justin Felbinger, he has a, an interesting texture to his voice. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But it's not just about that. He also has a skill to where he can hit transitions and and hit thoughts and go from thought to thought and show and express it through his voice. Mm -hmm. And that usually will make a standout audition, um, or where you see that they're thinking outside of the box. Right. They're doing things that other kids and all audition a lot of times different kids for the yeah. same part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's like, oh, I'll hear something like, that was really good. Like a great I'll interpretation hear something, of I'll hear yeah. something that they did that was slightly different than everybody yeah, yeah. else did. And I was like, I didn't even think of directing that mm -hmm. way. So cool, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And so right, do did you, that answer the question? It does. Okay. Do you, so and do you hear a lot of that? Like normally, typically when you're listening back to maybe an audition or something or you know, hearing somebody, you know, do a read and and do you hear little elements that you say, yes, do more of that, or little things that you might say, you know what, you don't really want to do that. that. Back or yeah, something. pull that yeah. back. Um I, I think for me. I, I developed an ear for for auditions when I spent my time at Disney TVA, yeah. uh, Disney TV Animation. Um, I think a lot of times uh, I respect them completely because they have like a lot of auditions that just get mm -hmm. constantly coming in. Yeah. So I think the average back when I was there was like twelve pilots a, a year. Yeah. And uh, I think sometimes weeks would go where we'd listen to six hundred to twelve hundred auditions in a week, and. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're listening to that many auditions, I think you do develop an ear for what oh, works yeah. or what doesn't yeah, work. Yeah. And so a lot of times if you hear something, it definitely stands out. Um, and a lot of times it's the choices that they're making on that dialogue that everybody else was doing. Um, you always hear um, parents like, oh, I don't know if I want to send my kid over to that agency because they'll get lost in the shuffle. And I hate hearing that. Yeah. I hate hearing that phrase because they don't get lost in the shuffle. It's my clients are rising to the top. They're the cream of the crop. They're mm -hmm. rising to the top because they're making choices on that dialogue yeah. um, with uh, vocal variety in the reads that stands out for them. Beautiful. Yeah. That's yeah. cool, man. Thanks. Yeah. You answered that very good, by the <laughs> yeah. way. Oh, thank you. Very good. You get an A+. Plus. Mm -hmm. a plus. Give them a red star. star. You get an apple. <laughs> he gets um, an apple.
Is it real? Is it a real apple? It is real. It's a real apple. apple. You okay. can't eat it. Now. <laughs> I I actually take a lot of time picking them because you know they're going to be on camera. So the produce, <laughs> I go to various markets depending. They got to look per The time. produce people know me. They're like, yeah, so Stacey, how we often got are these new- apples changed out? These are new apples. These are brand new apples. They're Just all beautiful. New yes. You did yeah. a beautiful job picking Thank the apples. Thank you. Thank I you very much. I think Stacey does. Who always knew does there were so many shades of green? Um, but back to you. So. How can people get in touch with you? Yeah. To study with you? They can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a uh, secret. Well, it was great having you. Thanks for coming. And um, bye-bye. Uh, I, I think uh, a lot of times uh, I will have clients reach me through referral. Uh, mm-hmm. It's A lot of times it's based off a of referral. Uh, through an agent, through a manager, or th- someone that's trained with me mm-hmm. um, is always a, a great thing. Yeah. And th- the reason for that is a lot of times because I want to see the best of the best. I want I want somebody that's going to take it serious yeah. when they're coming in. But otherwise, uh, some people do reach out to me on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. So right. that's right. always an option too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, so you do kind of you you have a bit of a vetting process. Kind of. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I think it's it's just. Kind of weed it, weed it out a little bit. Well, I mean that's a good for the process. benefit of your, yeah. for you and so, well, you, for them. You need so to I'm have not that. completely overwhelmed. Yeah. Exactly. I, I do have my my two oh, kids. Oh come on, get overwhelmed, I, yeah. Tony. And, it's and great what, being overwhelmed. When you have a two year old and a four month old, it's you're not a little like you have two kids. What and genres? <laughs> just for them, so that they know what genres of voiceover do you specialize in. Um, uh, TV animation, feature animation, that's my main thing. That's I think. your main thing. Uh, but I've, I've, I've done some Spanish commercials uh, with some sí. of my clients. Bra. No me digas. De veras. ¿Y por qué no? Claro que no sí. Sé. Vamos a comer. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Dónde está el baño? El queso es viejo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of that. All right. But that's not your present <laughs> Subtitles <butter. laughs> in English. Uh, subtitles. Are you guys going to do subtitles no, for no. that? I think we, we should. I don't know. Maybe Google it. Google right. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, my uh, my favorite. Well, I would say I would say animation is is yeah. the my favorite. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think it's my favorite. It's a it's the holy grail for for voiceover. I think. Yeah. I think everybody wants to do um, animation. Yeah. So. Do you think they, they anyone do. can do animation? Can everyone um, do animation? I you know like I said I think I I've been wrong before. I've been wrong yeah. before where pe- I, I'm like, oh, that's never going to happen. And then, and then they book and it's that like, whoa. To you Absolutely. Yeah. I will this never, was years ago. Say, so yeah. years ago, this one person, I stopped doing that. I stopped yeah. you know, thinking that oh, mm-hmm. people would not book. Yeah. No, I, I completely believe that it's possible for anybody. But I don't have a crystal ball. And I was just talking to um, one of my clients, Ryan Bartley, who she spent, um, since the time she was 15, she didn't book anything for ages and ages. And now, um, 10 years later, ten th- years. we're going on 10 years. 10 years later. Now she's starting to break in into the anime stuff, into Bang Zoom, uh, yeah. a lot of their animation and, yeah. and the, the anime manga sort of style stuff. Yeah. And that's fantastic. I've had clients like um, Zeno Robinson who, you know, who got dropped by his agent and picked back up after seeing him in one of my classes, and now he's booking. Now wow. he's working. And yeah. this picked is after years, too. Picked back up by the same agent? By the same agent. Mm. No. Yes. Wow, that's really interesting. Props to her Is that for how that? good you are, or how smart the agent is? Sometimes you have to see people differently. <laughs> yes. But don't yes. You, <laughs> yes. But I mean, sometimes don't you think you, you get kind of goggles for the way people, and then you sometimes have, it takes seeing them in a different way, in a different light. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think I think when somebody sees them in, in a different perspective, yeah. mm-hmm. they're like, oh, okay, that's great. Um, but it's also seeing somebody work, seeing yeah. somebody c- right. come back to it after years of being out of it and coming back into it and really working hard at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's it was, it's pretty amazing. It's like it's like a amazing or a blessing to watch. You know, somebody I've been working with mm-hmm. for so many years. Yeah, man, I know. And it going, is, yeah. oh man, I just wish they would book something soon. Yeah. yeah. And I keep thinking that, and then eventually, years down the line, yeah. it's like, oh, I'm so happy for and them. And the thing is, is sometimes you know you see them maybe getting a little bit frustrated, but you know, it's just a matter it's of just time. Just a matter of time, man. Mm-hmm. Just a matter of time. Well, no, but there is no bit. formula. There's no okay. You put in this yeah. much time in this many years. No. It, sometimes there people hit no right out of the yeah. gate, and sometimes it can take ten years. A, a perfect example would be Madison Pettis. Madison Pettis came. Um, uh, started mm-hmm. working with me when she was oh, really young, 
And uh, within two months, boom, she's working on um, a Disney Channel show and a movie. And she's now she's like she's done Izzy on Jake and the Neverland Pirates and yeah. uh, Beverly Hills Chihuahua. And she was right out of the gate. And then I have other clients that it's a long process. Yeah. Um, for example, my client Justin Felbinger, he, he came in and he uh, actually was on a scholarship program with me. Uh, I, I did it for a long period of time where I was doing scholarships every year for one client. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he did an entire year. His mom made sure he was there every single week. That's so good. Did not miss a week. Yeah. He moved and, in, right? He moved yeah. in. They moved house. in. Yeah. And basically he had an uh, entire year on scholarship. He did one year where he did nine callbacks. Did not book a job. Mm -hmm. Then the following year, it was just steamrolling, booking wow. everything, left and right. Yeah. And See? he's still booking. He's See? Still booking. See? That's a good point. Yeah. Don't quit. Well, that's all we got for part one with Tony Gonzalez. Be sure mm -hmm. you stick around next week for part two. And also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yes, it's right there. Just click it. And also, keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.